and welcome to our Legally Blonde College Production Bubble. Can I get a cheer, guys? <laughs> what an evening we've got planned for you. We have the Legally Blonde musical numbers. We have live interviews with our cast and crew. And I am joined here by two of our cast members who are going to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Molly and I play Margot. I'm Libby and I play Pilar. Amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about Legally Blonde, please, Molly? Yeah. So Legally Blonde is a show all about Elle Woods, who is struggling to find her place in the world. So when her boyfriend dumps her to Harvard, she decides to follow him and she finds her true self. Fantastic. Libby, can you tell us what you've enjoyed most during this college production rehearsal process? Um, I really enjoyed just like meeting a new circle of people that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. Brilliant. What's your favourite number, Molly? Oh, I really like Positive, but I've got to say Bend and Snap because it's so iconic. And what's your favourite number? I've got to say Positive, probably. Well, I'm going to say Positive now. <laughs> Absolutely. We've had an absolute blast. You've got singing, dancing and acting to watch. We are now going to go to our first musical number, which will be... Oh my God, you guys! Woo! <laughs>
It's perfect for a blonde. With a half lip stitch on China silk? Uh huh. But the thing is, you can't use a half lip stitch on China silk. It'll pucker. And you didn't just get this in because I saw it in last May's Vogue. <laughs> What a fantastic opening number. I've now got a question for Libby. What else do you study here at Wyke? Um, I study psychology, sociology and criminology and I hope to go on to do psychology at uni. Lovely. And what's so nice about the Wyke College production, it is cross-college. You don't have to study performing arts. Anybody can get involved and I think that's a huge plus, isn't it? Would you say you've made some friends on this one? Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Right, over to Molly. So our next song, can you tell us a little bit about the narrative um, and what's going to happen next in the musical? Yeah, so the next number is called Serious. This is where Elle and her boyfriend Warner go on a date, but it doesn't exactly go to plan, as you'll see. Brilliant. We are now going to watch the clip Serious. <laughs> I've got some 
dreams can be true. I thought that you'd understand. It's time to get serious. Time to get serious. Just check, please. Well done, Dan. That was absolutely brilliant. Just introduce yourself, please. Uh, hi, I'm Dan and I play Warner. Excellent. That was absolutely brilliant. Well done. So how have you found rehearsing during the pandemic? Because that must have come with its challenges over the last year. Yeah, it's been really difficult. I mean, we lost a lot of time from January to April due to being completely out of school. But I feel like we've done a brilliant job with what we've got. Oh, excellent. And what was your favourite part in the entire process? What, what's sort of like the lasting memory for you? I just think just being with everyone and, you know, making some new friends and just having just a whole set of uh, in-jokes and just <laughs> memories to laugh at. I think that's brilliant. You really have gelled as a <laughs> cast and um, as a company as well with our crew as well. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Ethan White and I played the pilot. Excellent. Would you like to tell us about our next musical number, What You Want Part One? Um, what sort of does it involve? Yeah, so it's a big chorus number with lots of dancing and singing, obviously. And it's about Elle, who studies really hard to get into Harvard Law School so she can finally get back with Warner. Excellent, thank you. We're now going to watch two musical numbers, Daughter of Delta New and What You Want Part One. <laughs>
Good God, why? Law school is for boring, ugly, serious people, and you button for none of those things. What? But hey, you just say the word, but what you want so absurd, and cuss a whole lot of swag. And her why? But when you can stay right here, pursue a film career. How about a nice burger bag? Yes, the East Coast is foreign. There's no film studios. It's cold and dark, no valley parking. All the girls have different goes. He's cracked. It's like the damn frontier. Tell me what the better you can get right here. a fantastic ensemble number. I'm now joined by two more cast members. I'm Tom Olson and I play Nikos. And I'm Bronwyn and I play Chutney. Brilliant. Thomas, tell me a little bit about your plans for the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the future, after work, I want to either go to university for performing arts or I want to go into something for fashion. Amazing. And you actually have singing lessons here, don't you? Yeah. Like, I have gone from absolutely nothing to, honestly, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I can sing pretty well now. <laughs> you toot your own horn, it's fine, because who is your singing teacher? You. And I do agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. You're doing fantastic this year. So, who do you play? I play Chutney. And you had quite a funny um, costume to wear, didn't yes, you? Tell us yes, a little I bit did. about that. So, basically, as you'll see, I have to wear a wig, and um, it's a bit adventurous and out there for me, but someone had to take one for the team, and... It's just, it's for a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Right, so tell me a little bit about this next song, which is What You Want Part Two. So in What You Want Part Two, Elle's plans finally fall into place and a lot of singing and dancing and you'll just see, yeah. I'm now going to um, introduce What You Want Part Two. <laughs>
here with singing, dancing, and ethnic movement. This is a very flashy presentation, Miss Woods, but I still do not see one reason to admit you. What about love? Have you ever been in love? Because if you have, you'll know. That love never accepts a defeat. No challenge is heaven. No place it cannot go. Don't say no. joined by one of our tech crew guys. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm James and obviously as Laura said I was part of the tech crew. Um, you've got quite a funny story for us about the filming day haven't you? We came in in half term to film in one day which was a lot of musical numbers. So tell us what happened to you because you wasn't involved in that to begin with was you? Uh, obviously I'd been taught tech for um, an exam and so people knew that I knew tech and I knew what to do and on the show day there was no tech people that turned up and obviously I got a phone call and I cancelled all my plans and I had to come in and do all the tech for the rest of the day. You just... Yeah! yeah. 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 Absolutely saved the day and you was absolutely brilliant. So can we all just say a massive thank you to you one more time? Big cheer, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We also have a cast member with us. Introduce yes. yourself. Hi, I'm Ben and I play the role of Grandmaster Chad. So we've just seen you, haven't we? Yes. Um, and your role involves rap. Would you describe yourself as a rap artist? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 not in the slightest. However, it's something that I'm particularly good at. I've done shows before, like Alexander Hamilton. I did a cabaret of that and I was Alexander Hamilton. So I definitely have experience in rapping. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. So we're now going to move on to um, Harvard Variation. Can yes. you just tell us a little bit about the plot line and where we're up to now um, with Elle's journey? Absolutely. So this is when Elle first gets introduced to Harvard and this is her first new experience to her. And she meets Warner and lots of other cast members during this time. Excellent. We're now going to watch Harvard Variation. Thank you. <laughs> Your Majesty. In my heart is the day I 
totally forgot to go here. <laughs> We're now joined by two more cast members and you just starred in that number, didn't you? So how was that for you? Tell me a little bit about the preparation for Harvard Variation. Well, we worked on it quite a bit, um, but we ended up having to change a cast member last minute on literally the day that we did it. So that was quite interesting. <laughs> and how did you find that? Did you, did you sort of have to do extra rehearsals on the day or did you just sort of launch into it and, and improvise? I think we just sort of went into it and told him where it needed to be. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It looked very polished performance there. Well done. And we also have another one of our leads. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Patrick and I play Professor Callahan. Amazing. So what made you audition for the college production? I think it was just the ability to become a bit more expressive, not just constantly work. It's nice to express yourself, uh, particularly through performance. Absolutely. And quite a powerful, strong character um, that drives the plot forward. So I suppose I'm going to ask you how you got into character, because um, you give a very, very strong audition. I remember your audition very, very well. Mm. So talk to me about that and how you sort of did the research about the character. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, I looked at uh, different performances. It's obviously a very intimidating character. So playing, uh, trying to embody it, being emotionless, is, it's kind of difficult, especially when you've got an audience. But I think if you have strong um, playing character and where there's a will, there's a way. So I think I embody that very well. Excellent. We're now going to watch your number. Oh. Can I introduce Blood in the Water? <laughs> Ignore that, it's simplistic and it's dumb. Only some of you will turn out sharks, just some. The rest are charm. Our topic is blood in the water. Kids, it's time you face. Law school is a waste. Oh yes, unless you acquire a taste for blood in the water. Dark and red and raw, you're nothing until the thrill of the kill becomes your only law. Mr. Schultz, hypothetical question. Would you be willing to defend the following banco? You the fraud. A kind old grandma took his savings and she sent it. To your client, what well, she saved since she was born. Well, he promised to invest it, but he spent it on prostitutes and heroin and porn. No, I would not take that. Wrong! This one is a win unless you're lazy. Grandma's approach and have some hack from legal aid. Put her on a stand and call her old and crazy. Your guy goes free and he can get you high and laid. Look for the blood in the water. Your Thomas Hobbes. Only spineless snobs will quarrel with the morally dubious jobs. Yes, blood in the water. Your scruples are a flaw. Miss Hoops, another hypothetical. Would you be the right lawyer for a following client? Say they offer you a bundle for defending a famous hitman for the mafia elite. Well, seems he missed his chosen prey, he killed a nun and drove away, running over three cute puppies in the street. Well, you think I wouldn't defend him just because he's a typical man? <laughs> oh, you lesbians think you're so tough. Oh dear, I feel my comments has offended. Hard to argue though when you're too mad to speak. Your employment will be very quickly ended Once they see how your emotions make you weak So what's my point? I run a billion dollar law firm And I hire four new interns every year From this class I will select four young shocks whom I respect And those four will have a guaranteed career Do you follow me? So I wanna see what Blood in the water Games begin. Four of you will win. Box just those four with an awful thing. Yes, blood in the water. So bite. Well, yes, Miss. Uh, What's Elwood's? Well, 
someone's had their morning coffee. I'll just summarise the case of State of Indiana be heard from your reading, please. Oh, um, I want to answer the puppy question. But I'm asking you about the assigned reading. Who assigns reading for the first day of class? We have got some <laughs> words. Miss Kensington? But well, let us say you teach a class at Harvard Law School, a position that you're justly proud about. But a girl whom you call hasn't read a case at all. Could you let her go or...? I'd kick her out. All right then. You heard your classmates. You have just been killed. She cut your throat so proud. Yes, you got guts, but now they spilled your blood in the water. So how you pass the floor? And if you return, be ready to learn, or is that unfair? Oh wait, I don't care. That's just who I read in life as in school with fear. Brilliant. Um, at this point, can I just mention, um, we've got an Instagram page, White Performing Arts. If you want to give us a follow and show your support by tagging us in a story, that would be absolutely wonderful. It means a lot to us and the cast. Um, I'm joined now by two more cast members. So if you introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Jaden Platten and I play various roles. <laughs> I'm Courtney and I play Enid. Brilliant. And what has been your um, favourite part in the entire process? What, what's memorable for you? There is a moment in uh, Scene of the Crime where I'm supposed to be wearing uh, a wig to show that I have a, a perm and they cut to me and my hair is completely straight and I just think it's going to be good for comedic relief. It's moments like that, isn't it? We wanted a bloopers reel, actually, didn't we? We had so <laughs> much fun on our filming day in half term. So you've just said you um, play a lot of characters in the yes. production. So how was that for you? And I suppose a question as well, what was part of your process and what's helped you prepare to play multi-roles in a performance? Well, to be honest here, a lot of the roles got uh, given to me by, I was completely not expecting it. <laughs> I play Hill's dad. Uh, <laughs> Carlos, I play Kyle, the UPS delivery man, and I also play Aaron Schultz, which is the role I stepped in on the day, which I wasn't expecting at all. But I think it was just a case of learning the songs, and I think I really bugged my parents by listening <laughs> to the songs a lot, a lot, a real lot. Would you like to give them a shout out now and a little thank you? Yeah, thank you for dealing <laughs> with me during this process. <laughs> And have you got any shout outs you want to make? Uh, shout outs to uh, my friends for listening to me sing the songs uh, over and over again. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Right, Jaden. we're about to um, move the story forward by going into a, an ensemble number mm. called Positive. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, it's actually my favourite song in the uh, show. Brilliant. And uh, it's the moment where Ellie's really down and she's really heartbroken about Warner. But the girls of Delta New help her be positive and uh, create a plan to, I believe, get him back or at least move on. Brilliant. Um, and I think that's what we've done this year during the pandemic, mm. all of us. We've just stayed positive, haven't we? And mm. we've just gone for it um, and we're here with this production. <laughs> right, guys, we're now going to watch Positive. Happy attitude, keep it positive. 
That was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed that one. So can you introduce yourself, please? I'm Anya Russell and I play Serena. And I'm Phoebe Mottershead and I play Kate and Leilani. Lovely. So Anya, why did you audition for the college production? I auditioned for the college production because Legally Blonde is my favourite musical. I love everything about it. I just adore Elle Woods and I think, I think everyone has a bit of Elle Woods in, in, in them. Absolutely, I'm dressed in pink. Love it. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. So you also brought in a, a family member, didn't you? One of your little family members? I did. I brought my dog Dottie in to play <laughs> Bruiser. <laughs> Absolute star of the show. And what was that like? Was it nerve wracking for you that was sort of recording your performances and then also having your family dog on set as well? Oh yeah, I felt a bit like Chris Jenner, like stage mum, you know, <laughs> like I was just watching Dottie constantly like, is she okay? You know, but she's, she's a star. She I'm really, really was proud of her. <laughs> yeah, she really was. Um, brilliant. So Phoebe, can you tell me a little bit about your plans for the future? Because I know you do singing lessons here. Um, you've got your BTEC, you do dance. We see you in the splits in this performance, <laughs> which is absolutely brilliant. So tell me a little bit about what your plans are for the future. Well, I've always loved acting and any sort of performing. So hopefully I'm going to end up at a drama school or even just with the company, just because that's just what I want to do. Brilliant. What about you, Anya? Do you want to go into it? I'd like to go into fashion. Amazing. So we are literally the L's, aren't we, here? Succeeding. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, we're going to go to our next number. Um, tell us a little bit about what the next number is, Phoebe. So this is an introduction to Paulette, and it's a very comedic scene with, which creates a very light-hearted atmosphere. Lovely. We're now going to watch Island. <laughs>
Wow, what a performance. Such a bold character. What an entry into a musical. So what do you study here, Katie? I study drama, psychology and English language. And have you enjoyed playing the role of Paulette? Definitely. I think it really helped me to get out of my comfort zone and play a character that's very bold and unapologetically herself. Would you say sort of your A-level drama studies here at Wyke have sort of helped you in this role? Definitely. We, we do, you know, different exercises to get into different characters from broad ranges of genres and I think that really helps, um, especially when it comes to a musical, it's all about giving it your all and putting all your energy into it. And you certainly did have loads of energy, well done in Thank that one. You. So we're now going to a duet, aren't we? And we're introduced to um, a character that we met in the Harvard Variation earlier on. So tell me a little bit about this start of the storyline here. So this is a number that's really about establishing the connection between Elle and Emmett and Emmett's obviously a character that's very different to Warner, who Elle is sort of trying to move on from. So it's, it's a lovely sort of segue into the, um, the new era of the play. Lovely, thank you. And we're now going to enjoy this duet, Chip on My Shoulder. <laughs> two of the leads. Can we get another cheer, guys, for the yeah. leads? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Can you just introduce oh. yourself? Uh, I'm Josh. I play Emmett. I'm Ellie, and I play Elle. Brilliant. And this was quite a new partnership, wasn't it, on the day of the filming? So just tell me a little bit about that. Well, me and Josh were already kind of friends, and we were already friendly with each other. Um, so that was quite helpful. It wasn't awkward stepping into the roles. So it felt quite natural, but it's always a bit difficult when you just get thrown into something. Um, but it was really fun, just something a bit different. Fantastic. And you knew the songs so well. I couldn't believe it. I thought you did a fantastic job. How did you know it so well? 
I'd just listen to it. I loved the musical anyway, so it was something I'd already listened to over and over and it kind of just stayed in my head, I guess. <laughs> oh, fantastic. What was the experience like recording rather than doing a live performance? I think that's quite an interesting aspect to the show. I think I really enjoyed it. I, I like that, you know, well, you could do sort of multiple takes of it if you went wrong, which was, which was really helpful, I think, especially given that we had kind of a restricted time because of COVID to rehearse and stuff like that. Um, and especially since we hadn't really rehearsed the song before. So it was kind of just like we got there and it was like cameras rolling from the first time we'd sung it. And it was good that we could then go back and, you know. Yeah. Like, really so your good. rehearsal was your live recording, wasn't it? Yeah. So we're going to watch another one of your duets now, aren't we? We're yes. going to watch sort of the title number, Legally Blonde. What was that like to sing together? You said you were friends and there's such a connection between the two characters. So what did that feel like? What was it like? It was nice. I mean, we hadn't rehearsed it, so it was a bit kind of nerve wracking. But when you get into it, it's just nice to get into the flow of it. And yeah, it was just really fun. Nice. I thought you did a fantastic job, guys. So we're going to watch that now. OK, we are now going to watch Legally Blonde. <laughs> Well done, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Just beautiful voices. Um, so what was it like, I'm going to ask you both this, to play the lead in the show? And I know we did have another lead, didn't we? So you're going to just talk a little bit about yeah. that now, aren't you? Yeah. Um, I just thought I'd shout out to Lucy at home, who was our original L, but unfortunately she was... Yeah, if we can have a clap for her. Um, unfortunately, she was ill on the day, so I stepped in. Um, 
But Elle's quite an extroverted character and me myself, I'm quite introverted. So it was a bit of a push out of my comfort zone, but it's always nice. I think that's why we do these things as performers um, is to push ourselves out of our comfort zones a little bit. So. Absolutely, and you did such a good job. And absolutely, um, we've got two L's and we celebrate both L's. So can we have one more cheer for both of our L's? <laughs> Fantastic. So what was it like for you to play this character? Because I, I do, I remember your audition um, mm. really well and you came in and we all made the comment that we thought you were fantastic. It, it was the role, we saw the role. And Thank that's you. always lovely um, when we're a director and we, we see that. So talk to me about the role. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like Emmett as a character. I think he has this sort of defensiveness, but a sort of sense of vulnerability that I think is really quite relatable. Um, so I think it was nice to play that because he's a really difficult person not to kind of like, I think. So I, I think that was quite, yeah, I, did, I, did, I liked the character, which I think helped a lot. Yeah, and in the song, um, Chip on My Shoulder, this character has fought for what, what, we, what he wanted really, hasn't he? And, and we're sort of talking about you guys going on to train further at drama school and fighting for that. And I think you have all worked really, really hard and you're all fighting for that. And I think you all absolutely des deserve to be on that stage and celebrate. So can we have one more round of applause please for that? <laughs> right, so we now have a number called Whipped Into Shape, which is a really, really famous number from the musical. And you're just gonna tell us a little bit about it before um, we play it. Uh, yeah, it's basically, um, it's in the court case, it's in the main plot line. Um, they're watching a tape recording of um, the woman who's accused um, and she's basically in prison and she's doing this routine and, and it kind of convinces everyone that she must be guilty, everyone except Elle, so. Brilliant. Right, we're now going to watch Whipped Into Sheer. <laughs> You can laugh, but she's made tons of early ladies and book with your way to tighter buns. Happily married, so she swears to her 60 year old stud. So her stepdaughter came downstairs, our found Brooke all covered in his blood. If Brooke took a plea, you'd have her out of three to four. But she claims she did not kill him. Did she? Let's watch some more. Come in, Brooke has trouble trusting me. I'm her only chance to win, but I don't speak MTV. But Brooke will help her own defense. She may listen to her peers. Go and place a little sense in the space between her ears. I'm tagged out to Not now. I want her whipped into shape. If there's a brain in that hair, tell it that I am the key. It 
needs a plea or the chair. See, when I talk to her, I get neither plea nor plan nor alibi. To quote from our defendant's tape, I want her whipped into shape to the jail. Well done. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Ruby Carter and I play Brooke Wyndham. And what was it like to play Brooke Wyndham? Um, it was weird really because she's quite a sporty character. Obviously she's a fitness instructor and I'm not sporty at all. But it was quite good because we actually didn't end up using the skipping ropes in the, in the actual dance. So it wasn't too difficult in the end. And when did you make that decision? When, when did you decide not to use something that you'd rehearsed? Um, when someone got whacked in the face, <laughs> um, yeah, a bit dangerous really. On the day, yeah. so it's maybe the spacing, fantastic, well I thought you did a brilliant job. I'm also joined by Alice and I play the judge. Brilliant, and what else do you study here at Wyke? Um, I study English literature and sociology. Fantastic, so why did you get involved with the college production? I also study performing arts as well and Laura Anderson is my <laughs> lovely teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I just thought College Prod was obviously a good opportunity to make friends and enhance my acting skills and musical theatre skills as well. Yeah, and we've really seen that, you know, I think with all of you, your dancing's improved, your singing, your acting, um, and the footage is absolutely fantastic. So we're now going to watch another number that you're both involved with, and we're going to go live and watch Bend and Snap. <laughs>
Brilliant. I'm now joined by two of our crew who are going to tell us a little bit what it was like on the day of the filming. So I'm Tyler. I was the stage manager. I gathered all the props and made sure everything was running well pretty much with the rest of the crew. And I couldn't have done that without the rest of the crew. It is very difficult actually being crew, unlike many would think. Yeah, you did really well. You sort of managed the day and made it run smooth, didn't you? Um, sort of, you had runners, people doing microphones. As you said, you gathered some of the um, set and props. Tell us a little bit about the set, what you had to get. We, we kept it quite minimal, didn't we? But what did you get? So we ended up getting American flags, chairs. Uh, we got a wig. We got a duck uh, shower curtain and bath cap. And that was quite fun, wasn't it? it was you, you sort of had your fun element. You definitely yeah. put your stamp on that part. Brilliant. And, and how was you involved? Introduce yourself and tell me what you did on the day. Uh, hello, my name's Riley and I was the assistant stage manager to Tyler. Um, so my role was really just helping him to make sure everything's running smoothly and kind of just bouncing between jobs. So if we needed another runner or another micer, I'd just help out here and there, making sure that it runs smoothly as well. Brilliant. And can I just say thank you from all of us? Can we have a big cheer, guys? <laughs> We're now going to watch Scene of the Crime.
can see it's meant so much to our students and the performing arts department. Can we have one more cheer, guys? <laughs> One of our biggest enrichments at Wyke Sick Film College is our cross-college production. This is open to all students, but especially for performing arts students who are expected to participate. In recent years, we've done productions including Mamma Mia, Grease, The Greatest Sherman and Chicago. Here are some examples of our great performances led by our student team.
If you'd like to be part of the college production, either on the stage or behind the scenes, our audition process takes place in the summer term.